one of the things that I like to do is to figure out the one pivot point or the, you know, the one thing that can change everything else. I, I do this in my personal life. I do this for my health. I do this for investing. I do this for my relationships. For example, for my health, if I, you know, my one pivot point last year was sugar. So if I cut sugar or greatly reduce sugar, then that can affect pod positively many areas of my health. It makes me want to work out. I am have a more balanced energy throughout the day. I don't crash energetically. And so that's been kind of the one thing uh, for health. And it's the same thing for investing or relationships. Like what is that one thing that can um, you know, affect all these other things? So with my kids, one of the... <laughs> There's two things I want to teach them, and really only two things in life. Um, one is empathy, empathy for themselves uh, first, and empathy for others. Um, and the second thing, I know I said two, but for my kids it's going to be two. And, and the second thing I want to teach my kids is how to be brave. And I don't mean how to be brave, like run into a building on fire or become a police officer. I mean be brave and push through or move through those anxious feelings or scared feelings or feelings that may hold you back, but be brave and move through those. And so as I've been teaching them that one, and the brave thing is mine, the empathy is Burgess's. So my really main thing is how do they be brave? Um, which means I then have to be more brave. <laughs> if I'm going to teach it to them, I also have to be brave. So as I think about what I want to do with my kids, my four-year-old girl and my seven-year-old son, um, that has my attention often turned to the stock market. And what's the one thing this week? What's the one thing you should take from this week that can impact your net worth, your wealth, whether you live in Perth, Australia, or York... England or anywhere else in between there above and below or around what's the one thing that could possibly be impacting your money and so I think I have that one thing for you hey everybody this is RC Peck and this is my weekend podcast and the theme for this week is money is still flowing here <laughs> now if you just see those words you would not get the inflection in my voice but really Money is still flowing to this one asset. And I think that's really the biggest thing you take from this week. Now that thing, that investment, or that investment entity, whatever you want to call it or frame it, it's called many different things, is the U.S. dollar. And what, I, what you're seeing here on the screen is a weekly price chart of the U.S. dollar going back to the beginning of 1995. So we've got two decades of information. And... The stock, the stock, um, the U.S. dollar fell from the high in 2001 to the low in 2008. And generally speaking, that was about a 45% fall. So as the dollar was getting weaker, basically the rest of the currencies around the world were getting stronger. But then in 2008, it stopped falling. And the move between there, it has retraced 38%. So usually when you have a move, you can start to measure its retracements. And the typical retracements are a 38% retracement, a 50% retracement, and a 62% retracement. So the dollar did a 38% retracement um, once at the end of 2008, once at the beginning of 2009, once in the middle of 2010, and then back in, back, way back in 2014, it hit that 38% retracement again, only this time it kept going above it. It kept moving, and it actually hit the 50% retracement. And again, this is the U.S. dollar, the largest fiat currency on this planet. Actually, the largest fiat currency ever in the history of this planet is the U.S. dollar. And it has just done a 50% retracement from its high to low move from 2001 to 2008. And it looks like it wants to go to its 62% retracement, which has the U.S. dollar index at about 101. Right now it's at 95. So it looks like we could get another 5% move to the upside. 
Now, I want to be careful and not have you think I am predicting it is going to go higher. I'm simply looking at the price charts and seeing where the direction of the price is moving. And that will tell me where the flow of money is moving. And the flow of money absolutely is still moving into the U.S. dollar. That is, from the majority point of view, caused by Europe and Europeans pol and the European policy around their currency and their interest rates as the European Central Bank wants to collapse their currency, the euro, which it's currently doing. It also wants to lower those interest rates in those countries, so much so that people go, you know what, I'm not going to keep my money in the bank where the bank's going to charge me to just have my money sit there. There are negative interest rates all across Europe. Germany's five-year bond is now negative. To put that in perspective, the U.S.'s five-year bond is at 1.5%. So guess what? The world is flowing their money into the U.S. dollar because it is paying a higher rate. The U.S. dollar and the U.S. treasuries are the same market. One is behind the other. And so money is continuing to flow into the U.S. dollar. Now as I zoom in, and this is a daily chart, meaning each one of those little we can't see the dots because they're they're connected, but each one of those lines represents a daily move in the underlying security, which in this case is the U.S. dollar. If you look at the very, very top of this price chart, you can see that the dollar moved sideways for about six weeks. Now, to me, what's so incredible, a market or an investment or a stock or a sector that is very, very strong will correct going sideways and not correct going down or going lower. And it looks like the dollar is breaking out to new highs. And all it did was correct sideways. So again, when a market corrects sideways and then continues its move, that is just telling you how incredibly strong that move is. And I see us, and I, I see that's what's happening to the dollar right now. The other thing that I want you to know is I measure the percentage um, distance between the actual price of an underlying investment and the 200 period moving average. So in this case, we're looking at the daily chart. So this would be a 200 day moving average. And I just want to point out that you'd think that this move that is going on right now has the actual price as far away from the US from the 200 day moving average that it ever has. But you'd actually be wrong. It moved farther and faster away from the 200 day moving average back in the 2008 meltdown of everything on this planet. So what I think is so incredible, money is flowing into the do into the U.S. dollar much faster, almost as fast, let me be very clear about this, almost as fast as late 2008 when literally companies were collapsing, uh, Lehman Brothers collapsed, companies were going bankrupt, housing was tumbling, and literally the whole world was scared. Uh, and this is, you know, right when um, our... Fed decided to start printing, which turned out to be three trillion additional dollars out of thin air. So, you know, people are kind of scared right now. They're flowing into the U.S. dollar. People do that when they're scared. And money is continuing to flow into the U.S. dollar. What is the takeaway? Generally speaking, this should be better for European stocks and Japanese stocks over U.S. stocks, though U.S. stocks will stu still do well because people are getting their money out of their local currency and moving it into other investments, which will be their own uh, their own stock market and the U.S. stock market. But it's very likely the U.S. stock market will lag the European and the Japanese stock market this year. As far as the big takeaway, really, the U.S. dollar is setting the pace and is continuing to set the pace. And maybe, maybe it really isn't the U.S. dollar. Maybe what it really is is the European Central Bank is setting the pace by destroying their currency and dropping their interest rates so low. That's probably more apt or more um, clear to what's setting the pace. But money is flowing into the dollar. And as long as money flows into the U.S. dollar, it's really going to hurt commodities. Um, most commodities are priced in dollars. Um, right now, gold is kind of holding its own. Um, so we'll see how long that continues and if it does continue, and I will track that and keep you updated. Um, but this is where the flow of money is going. It's going into the U.S. dollar. I don't know how long this can go on until the, the U.S.-based corporations are going to say to the government, 
hey, you're making our job of making money a little bit more difficult. Uh, you're going to have to start doing something, printing more money, lowering interest rates, something so people stop flowing money into our currency. Uh, but that's where we are now. And that will continue to see money flowing into the U.S. dollar and having money probably flow into European stocks and Japanese stocks, which will outpace the U.S. stock market. Everybody, this is just another step in helping you secure your portfolio and secure your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck.